I always like to bring up this metaphor. I always like to think about uh, when you have degradation in a digital collection, it's like having a library that is filled with books, but you have missing pages on them. And uh, we know there's change in repositories that can be intentional and unintentional. Intentional can be cases where you would change the scheme of a collection, and uh, unintentional when you have power outages and disasters and things that don't really want to happen, but affect you anyways. And, uh, we all know that collections can be also affected by problems with uh, link persistence, especially when we're dealing with external resources. So uh, there's this general assumption that uh, when you have uh, repositories that are more institutional, uh, their contents are more accurate. And when you have reports that are less institutional or more uh, freely curated, their contents are more likely to exhibit symptoms of change. However, I found that this is not the case. So, as an example, I, uh, the, uh, the ACDL series, when you uh, go through the ACM digital library, if I read the ACM digital library, there's uh, 15 unique links to the conference. Uh, however, eight of them are wrong, are wrong in some way. They display uh, content that is totally unrelated, and in this case, the most notable is the one from 2011, which shows diet pills and things that have nothing to do. So, anyways, this is a case study that uh, shows that this assumption about uh, uh, degradation and uh, institutional repositories is wrong, and illustrates some of the changes in the current web environment. So, as I said before, uh, the corpus for this study is the, uh, the ACM digital library, which I harvested very slowly and very politely. And uh, I went through the list of conference proceedings and extracted 6,086 URLs. And uh, out of those 6,000, 6, only 2,001 were unique. And uh, out, of the, out of those, uh, 1,492 gave an OK HTTP response, which is the ones that I was more interested in. And these are supposed to be correct because you get an OK response. However, when I went through them manually, I found out that only uh, 917 were correct, which is 61%, and 36% uh, of them were incorrect, so they were pointing to the wrong content. And there were 42 documents that I couldn't tell if they were either correct or incorrect, so I just labeled them unsure and left them aside. So, moving forward, I categorize the uh, incorrect documents into nine categories that list, that are listed in approximate order of severity, and uh, they uh, uh, illustrate the different stages that conference pages go through until they're actually abandoned. So the first category is kind of correct. It's a document that uh, is, shows related content, but it doesn't fully match the concept from the anchor text. In this case, it, this is a conference proceeding, and this is showing uh, like a call for papers or an announcement for the conference. It's not exactly what you're looking for, and it's listed as less severe. So the next one is university and institution pages, and uh, most conferences are some, somewhat tied to uh, academic institution. So when you get a server error, in this case, it would mostly redirect to the parent institution, which is what is I think is happening here. The third one, which is more severe, we have server errors again, with it showing directory listings or a hello world page, again showing errors in configuration. The next one, the blank pages, no content at all. The fifth one is redirects that would not redirect for some reason. The sixth one are pages that would display errors specifically, in this case, getting a error establishing a database collect, uh, connection. The seventh one are pages in a different language. So we're, we're starting to see this change happening. So pages in a different language, something that you're not expecting to see at, or see at all, especially in a conference page, which are usually in English. And again, the uh, contents in the page do not match the language in the, anchor, in the anchor text. The next one is the eighth category, which is where the domain goal is actually for sale. And it means that the domain has lapsed and is about to be taken over by a third party. And the last one is this category that I labeled the CV pages, which really uh, illustrates that the site has been taken by a third party. 
the content is unrelated, and uh, I hypothesize that this is somewhat related to trying to manipulate the page rank algorithm, which I will go through in a bit. So uh, again, this analysis of the conference uh, website links in the ACM digital library shows that institutional archives are not immune to the challenges of, of distributed collections, of distributed collection management. And uh, knowing when changes to a resource require human attention is not a simple problem. And once such an assessment has been made, uh, we can apply techniques to uh, replace or uh, uh, correct these errors. So again, uh, going back to uh, uh, one of my slides, uh, I found that 404 errors were more, were more prevalent, which aligns with previous work that shows that pages degrade and they go through uh, 404 errors. However, when I look into the uh, pages that are were supposed to be correct, giving a 200 HTTP response, only 36% of them were incorrect. So this shows, shows us that uh, the correctness of the page is relative, and we need methods to locate more problematic resources. So going back to the decision pages, so I started asking why are these pages made? Why are they, because they don't really fool anyone. So uh, I mean human users in that sense. So analyzing their contents, I found that the number of links within each page is, is great, it's, it's very large. So what is basically happening is they're creating farms of documents behind these sites. And uh, what is interesting is that they're using domain names that are valuable but not valuable in the monetary sense, but in the sense that at one point they were owned by a reputable institution, which in this case is a conference series that in many cases has been going on for a number of years. So again, my hypothesis, which I need more, more work and more time to uh, verify, is that these pages were created to manipulate page or page rank, because if you think about the cost of creating a website, it's very little, it doesn't cost that much, and you can just populate a server with lots of pages, and the rankings from uh, search engines, most notably Google, are not here anymore. So people are, are coming to these practices in an effort to manipulate the rankings. So uh, as a conclusion, I would say that uh, this work is about trying to detect unexpected changes in collections, and these changes fall within a, a, a range. They're not changes as that they are as subtle as just a few substitutions of terms in the page, and not as extreme as showing errors specifically. They fall in between, which are more harder to identify. And yeah, so and we're working on a classification system that uh, needs more testing to identify these two extreme changes in the, the contents. So yeah, I take questions and comments, and there's my contact info. Very cool, thank you. So in the, the kind of uh, categories of the errors that you showed, is it somehow time sensitive? Uh, in sense, I mean, if you re reproduce the, this experiment, the database error would be have gone and, you know? I have no idea of knowing. This was when I harvested the whole collection. Mm -hmm. it, it could be the case that at some point it was restored. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. What makes you what motivates you to distinguish between your three most severe cases? So the different language, the GoDaddy redirect basically, so the domain is, has lapsed and right. it's not yet been taken over, and the domain has been taken over. What's the different? Why is different language less severe than domain taken over uh, and new content? Well, I thought about in that. A, in a language that you anticipated. Because it's also uh, your uh, no, I, I, I subjective. Uh, um, yes, yeah. because I, I mean. It could be the case that those pages are a different language. They, it could be that they're actually the conference page, but mm -hmm. there's a certain level of uncertainty in there. And it, so you're saying that the level of uncertainty is larger in, right. the, in the last case than in the different language? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I get there are different cases, but I sort of take your point that in terms it's hard of severity, to I'm not, yeah. apply an ordering that the Japanese page is more or less severe than the domain. Right, right. I mean, it could say domain for sale in Japanese, for all we know, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so in terms of classification, I agree. In terms of severity, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. yeah. So we, mm -hmm. That's why I said it was approximate. It's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I think cross-language uh, uh, um, linking is, is common practice. I mean, I run an Urdu community, and uh, 
when I'll be back from here, I'll be telling people like what I did, right. and I'll be linking all these resources. Uh, like um, they are mostly in English, but that uh, the place where I'll be sharing is in Urdu language. So, so, so basically, the title text there will be in in Urdu, right. which will be pointing to an English uh, document. And I think <laughs> I don't know, like unless unless someone verifies um, using translation or something, how. Uh, is it really related or not? I think. The, well, I think his point is there was an expectation that the language was originally right. in English, right? Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. the fact that it's no longer in English is, is yeah. a strong uh -huh. indicator that something weird happened, right? Right. Which, which then, I mean, it's also tricky to determine whether the entire page is in this one language right. that you expect, right, if you have multiple language pages. And those kind of things. Yeah. So, did you try to verify uh, going, like, you know, back in time, like using archives or something? Like, yeah. what was. The, okay. No, I didn't go that far. Yeah. Um, is there a correlation between the uh, the time when the web page was created, so the, the year of the conference, and the stage it is? In? Yes, I mean, I, I found that it takes like three years and a half from the from a conference being the actual website of the conference to being something totally unrelated. So there's actually, you could actually plot the distribution of all these different kinds? Yes. This would be interesting to see, to see how if maybe pages get taken over at one specific point in time, and if this is always preceded by error pages when the servers get shut down gradually, it would be very interesting to see. It's probably a pattern. Yeah. So well, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. It, yeah, <coughs> I've, I've actually taken some snapshots of the death of the page, right, where you get the can't connect to database, then yeah. nothing, and then for sale. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, right. But the ultimate for sale, I'm sure, is almost always going to be whatever the duration of the uh, the DNS registration is. Right. And put, you know, add that to the time, <laughs> and and it's also far enough away from the conference that nobody thinks about it. Yes. But, so. Right. Thank you. Thank you.